In this video, we will look at the central difference scheme. This is one of the most widely used explicit method for structural analysis, especially for crash simulations. Here is our discrete timeline. We have three discrete points in time. Let us recap. Here is the forward Euler approximation that uses the displacements at un plus 1 and un to approximate the velocity at time un. However, the velocity at time n can also be computed by using the values at un minus 1. This is the basic idea of the central difference scheme. The velocity at n can be computed using the difference in the displacement across two time steps. In a similar manner, we can also compute the acceleration as the difference in the velocity. Introducing the forward Euler approximations for the velocity, we can obtain the acceleration as a function of the displacements. Please take a few minutes to derive this formula yourself. Let us introduce these approximations into the semi-discrete equation of elastodynamics. Here is the semi-discrete equation. Now let us discretize this expression, that is, write this equation at time n. Introducing the central difference approximations into this expression, we get the following. We can now simplify this expression, that is, keep the term un plus 1 in the left and take everyone else to the right. We do this because we know the displacements at n and n minus 1 and we would like to compute the unknown term un plus 1. Thus, we have a formula for recursively computing the new displacements of the structural system. All we need is a for loop within the finite element code that updates the displacements. In static analysis, you know the expression ku is equal to f. Here we solve an analogous ku is equal to f for each time step. Looking at this expression, some of you might already be wondering how to start the simulation because we have a term u minus 1. That is, yes, we need a special starting procedure. In addition to the initial condition, the velocity and displacement u0 and u0, dot we need to go back in time to compute u minus 1. Well, this special starting procedure is pretty straightforward. We can make a backward Taylor expansion and for the initial acceleration, we can use the balance equation at time t is equal to 0. Now let us look at the stability of the central difference scheme. For the stability analysis, we will introduce the central difference approximations into the one degree of freedom system with mass m, damping d, and stiffness k. We can also write this equation in terms of the angular frequency omega and damping factor c. This is just an alternative formulation that will make things mathematically easier later and helps link the stability of the method to the time period of the system. We can time discretize this equation and introduce the central difference approximations. Here is the amplification matrix for the central difference scheme. The second row is introduced just to obtain a matrix form of the expression. Given the amplification matrix, we can compute the eigenvalues and also now compute the spectral radius. The eigenvalues can be computed using the classical formula using the characteristic polynomial you studied in school. On the left is shown the spectral radius for the method. As you can see, if delta t is greater than t by pi, then the method is unstable. 
If you have multiple degrees of freedom in your system, such as a structure with millions of nodes, then the node with the smallest time period in the system must satisfy this condition. In the Python exercises, you can test this criticality condition yourself. Finally, when using explicit methods, we have to ensure that the CFL condition is satisfied. So far, we were not concerned by the spatial discretization. However, we have to keep in mind that in a real structure with several degrees of freedom, the displacement field is obtained by transferring information from the boundary to the rest of the structure in a consistent manner. For example, applying a displacement at one end of the beam will induce stresses at the other end of the beam. And in a transient simulation, this transfer of information also occurs at a certain speed. Thus, if the time for this information transfer from one node to the adjacent node is smaller than the time step size, then we are introducing additional errors of inconsistency. Let us look at this intuitively. If the information comes from the bottom node to the middle node, the middle node must update itself as soon as it receives the information. In case the time step size of node 2 is too big, then it will only update itself at a later stage. Thus, the time step size must be made smaller if the mesh size is made smaller. Now it's time to practice what you studied here with programming exercises.